Hello, welcome to another edition of Jim's Allotment Garden. So in time on a uh, tradition, I'll start in the greenhouse. Um, I'm going to whisk around reasonably quickly today um, because I've got a couple of videos that I made earlier in the week that I want to put in. So, uh, so as you can see, the tomatoes are ripening nicely. Uh, I've got plenty, plenty coming on there. Those are the small tomatoes. As you can see down there, there's loads coming there. Uh, what I have noticed is obviously the ones that are getting the light are ripening quicker. So I'm going to take some more of these leaves off when I get five minutes. Um, these uh, um, oh, great vines are doing great guns as you can see. We're up to here now so that's grown or at least about five foot. So it's at the kind of about the six foot level now. So um, um, I don't know if anybody can give me some advice but I think I should be pulling these little side shoots out at the moment. Um, if anybody can advise me on that, please do so. Cucumbers doing really well. Um, as you can see, this one here, that's a pretty good example. It's probably about 18 inches long. Um, there's loads of them at the back as well. Uh, the tomatoes, again, doing really well. Um, obviously, if you have put Bordeaux mixture on them, make sure you uh, wash, them, wash it all off before you uh, um, use the tomatoes. And what I have been doing with these, is um, I made a chicken pie um, the other night with, with our potatoes um, and our onions and our um, tomatoes and all I basically do with the tomatoes is um, wash them all off thoroughly drop them in a, um, a jug with boiling water just for a minute and then you can peel off, you'll, you'll find that the, the skin will split and then peel off the skin, chop them up and then put them into your cooking and that's really nice. Uh, I plan to do a ratatouille this week uh, with, with uh, these ones on here um, and uh, <coughs> I've also done a curry and I've done a chilli with them as well so um, they are really nice when you've got your own fresh tomatoes obviously the ones that we've got over here um, these these smaller ones um, I've just shown you they're, um, they're, they're used in salads and stuff like that um, some of the onions, this one I'm going to show you in a minute these are some that's got a little bit of um, end rot or gone a bit weird at the end I'll use them today, I'm going to do a chilli so um, when they're fresh, um, the, the the taste is quite strong. So um, when you first pulled them, you might want to put slightly, unless you like the taste of one, you obviously go, you know, go for it. But uh, if um, you're not overly keen on a strong onion taste, a bit of taste, um, put less onion in when you first pull them. So that's pretty much the greenhouse. Um, obviously, there's uh, there's the seeds um, that I uh, showed you earlier in the year. So. Sorry, earlier in the week, that, that's uh, them are there. So uh, I need to collect the rest of the seeds uh, in the next few weeks. But uh, so that's the greenhouse. Um, one thing I meant to do this week was cut the uh, the herbs back. Um, it's starting to get a little bit um, um, sort of sort of brownish. So uh, that's a reasonably good sign too. I'm cutting back with the oregano. What I intend to do. Sorry, with the oregano. That's mint. With the oregano, what I intend to do is chop that up and dry it. So just basically chop it all up, take the leaves off, chop it all up really finely, put it on a baking tray in the window, dry it off, and then you can use that in your spaghetti bolognese or well, any Italian dish basically. Um, if you're making a, um, a salsa or if you're making a um, pizza, just sprinkle that on and away you go. The sage has just gone balmy because I didn't cut it down um, at the end of this year because I was, um, I was making tea from this. So I, uh, I didn't um, cut it back, so that's going to be cut really hard back. The rosemary um, has actually fell forward a little bit under the weight, but uh, what I'll do is um, chop that 
uh, back a bit. With, with herbs, if you cut them back, you'll get a flourish of um, new growth. So um, at this time of year, when they start to go into flower, that's the, that's the sign to cut them all back. So all of this means here um, that you can see, um, um, I'm going to um, cut that right back. Um, I don't tend to use that much mint, so what I'll do is I'll just keep a few sprigs in the kitchen uh, to put in the potatoes and stuff, but uh, um, the lemon balm and the mint I'll cut right back almost to the ground and uh, just compost that. Um, the um, pumpkin um, is doing really well. What I've done is I've, I've sat it on glass, because if you don't put it on something flat, you don't have to use glass, you can use a um, an old roof tile or, or anything like that, anything that's flat and, and, and um, clean. Because um, if you leave them sitting on the ground, they tend to go a bit, I don't know, not, not, not rotten as such, but they, they tend to go a bit um, nasty underneath. So um, if you put it on a piece of glass, um, or if you haven't got glass, um, a tile or a tray or a plate or anything like that, you'll find that the, um, you, know, you won't get any discoloration. The reason for the bricks is um, it's really windy today, and I've noticed this has been rocking about a bit, so I've, I've anchored that leaf down there with a the brick at the back, and I've just put these here just to stop it from rocking about and damaging it. Um, but as you can see, it's been really hot today, and uh, I need to get some water in there later on. I apologise if um, the sound quality is not brilliant today. As I say, the wind's just picked up, as you can see. The, uh, the weather vane's spinning around merrily. So um, if um, you can't hear me very well, I do apologise. I'm trying to keep it as close to my mouth as possible. The strawberries have been watered three or four times and we've had a load of rain this week, so you can see they've really picked up. The reason I've got the frames over there is obviously there's no fruit to be pinched by the, by the birds, but uh, I've been putting the sprinkler on, so that's that little stool in the middle there. I've been sprinkling it from there. Um, so that's pretty much that here. The little strawberry plants down here are just coming into flower, so I might be getting some little strawberries off there. And the, uh, the lavender down there, again, hasn't really done much. Um, I know lavender is a slow growing plant, but uh, you know, when you consider these plants are now over 12 months old, uh, I mean, they're slow and they're slow. But anyway, walking around here, the carrots are doing quite well. They've really picked up and they've really uh, um, appreciated this rain we've had this week. You can see the extra seeds that are put in. Um, here, so obviously where the, the gaps were in the, uh, the row, and here, I don't know if you can see here and here, um, so they'll be, um, they'll be just as good but obviously they'll be a bit later, there's a little row of them there and some there. So what I'll be doing is obviously picking these carrots first and then I'll have a little succession, I know it didn't go to plan but uh, um, normally what I'll do is plant all the carrots together and then just pick them as I need them. But, uh, um, the spring onions, as I say, weren't weren't very good because of the uh, sudden influx of weed whilst I wasn't very well. Um, I've put the chives in there, so they're doing all right. Um, everything else here is as it's been in previous videos. The, uh, I need to get the seed off the asparagus soon. Still got um, plenty of raspberries um, coming. Obviously not as quick as they do in the spring, where I've got some later fruiting varieties. So as you can see. The blackberries are starting to come, and we've still got raspberries, some nice ones up here. So uh, there's just enough for uh, like a little bit, um, you know, trust them with some ice cream and that. Um, as you can see here, yeah. there's, there's plenty of them about. So you've just got to hunt for them. And um, earlier uh, today and yesterday, and earlier in the week, I picked all the onions, and uh, you know, look like that, I've put them out to dry and I made a little video just to explain um, all about that but uh, basically I've pulled all the onions out, made this um, sort of tray here and I'll, I'll keep them here for the next kind of three weeks, three or four weeks to uh, ripen off. We are a little bit early this year but because of the weather we've had the onions have um, um, you know sort of gone over that, that much quicker so I've, anyway I've pulled them up, I've pulled all the outer skins off and I've ended up I put in almost 500 um, onions and I've got out about 250, 270, something like that. So around 50% um, success rate. I have had some, but uh, to be honest with you, I, I can't complain. There's more than enough onions there to keep me going for a bit. So um, here's the video I made earlier in the week. So over the last few days, well, the last week, uh, the onions have gone over, which basically means you'll see that 
naturally the the onions have flopped over which is a sign that you need to um, basically lift them out of the ground and set them to dry so the way to do this is if you just put your fork underneath the onion and lift it slightly with the fork and just by grabbing the end and shake it off get all the dirt off the bottom and then leave it upside down um, on a, a table which I'll show you afterwards um, to to dry out so now I've hung the um, onions up on some of this uh, mesh to uh, dry them out and uh, basically all I've done is driven um, some stakes into the ground I've supported the other end by a sort of A-frame thing that I've got and what you need to do is turn the onions upside down feed them through the so they're basically facing um, up and the roots are facing up and what will happen now is they'll um, basically ripen off in the sun don't worry about them getting wet that's perfectly okay um, the problem that you're trying to avoid is them sitting in water and what you can do is I've got some I've got some examples here what you can get is this which is um, it basically starts to rot at the bottom because the onion sort of <coughs> when it's sitting in the ground it makes like a hollow like that so it's actually sitting in the ground and basically water accumulates in there and then the onion sits in water and starts to rot so what you're doing is picking them up out of the water it doesn't matter if they get wet as long as they're not sitting in water and then they'll sit there now for probably about three or four weeks just to ripen off and go nice and brown any sort of leaves uh, or skin should I say on the outside that um, that looks slightly damaged just, just peel that off as you as you're putting them in and then uh, the uh, the outer edge will go brown again in the sun as it ripens so quickly moving on I'll just go into the first uh, uh, tunnel as you can see the sunflowers really are starting to come as you almost start to see some petals there but uh, in the first tunnel uh, we've been picking quite a few peas this week um, so uh, most of these now have pretty much gone over these are starting to look a bit, even though that's not formed, it's starting to look a bit. You see that sort of whiteness I explained last time. So the peas in there probably aren't going to be brilliant, but uh, that's what you want, a nice smooth green. So them, them three are ready. If you start to see the skins go a bit like that, um, the peas in there aren't, aren't, aren't probably going to be much good. Um, spinach is still doing well, we've had a bit of that. Um, that was really nice. We, I also had some kale earlier this, year, uh, this week with... Um, some uh, um, I made some Moroccan um, chicken um, and we had a bit of kale with that which was, uh, which was quite nice I made some uh, potato uh, with our own potatoes I made some potato um, sort of herby potatoes where you cut them up small and uh, we had a bit of kale on the side that was that was a really nice meal um, these peas here um, starting to flop over so what I'm going to do is pull these peas out as soon as I've got the last ones off so as soon as these ones have um, filled out um, I'm going to pull out these apple canes here, but I am going to trim the apple tree down anyway because this is the right time of year to take any of these shoots out. Um, so I'm going to trim some more out of the tree anyway, but I'm going to be taking these peas out probably this week or next anyway. So I'll be propping those peas up there and doing a bit of weeding in here because uh, I've been so busy with the onions and everything else, I've not uh, got around to it. But um, the uh, parsnips, sorry, not the parsnips, the, uh, the turnips. Oh, doing really well. God, there's a whole cluster of them there, so I really not to, need to start to get these um, used up now. So uh, we have had a few of those, but uh, as you can see, the leaves are starting to die back, so that's a good sign that we need to use them up. And there's a really nice big one there. That's probably gone too far, to be honest. These ones are probably going to be a bit woody now. But, um, again, that's that shoot I showed you last time. That's the spinach beet running to seed. If it does do that, just um, pull it out like that from the from the bottom and uh, give that to your chickens if you've got any because they'll almost certainly thank you for that so I'll give them I'll give that to my chickens as soon as I finish the video um, so that's the first tunnel um, the second tunnel hang on I'll just shut the, shut the door on there uh, the sweet peas have been um, really beautiful um, they don't only look pretty but the, the smells really nice in the morning when you come up the first thing and at night as well but uh, I keep pulling off the little shoots and the um, the at the bottom have uh, 
they put on a really nice show as well, been beautiful colours. Uh, as you can see, it is really windy. I hope the sound's coming out okay. Um, again, second tunnel, uh, not much happening in there. The property at the back um, really has uh, um, not really done much over the last week. I think that's pretty much finished, to be honest with you, but we have had about five or six meals off that. So uh, not too bad. Um, the broccoli at the front, obviously, I've been watering that, keeping that, uh, keeping that wet, and that's come on a bit. That's grown about six inches. Courgettes, um, again, uh, doing really well. The chickens have had a few of them. They, they quite enjoy courgette. Um, my freak, um, pourgettes uh, or um, pumpkins or whatever you call them, um, are still growing. So uh, I'm quite intrigued to cut one of these out and see what it looks like. This one at the end seems to have um, started to form more of a pumpkin shape, so I really don't know what to think. But um, I've got three, three or four pumpkins, so that's more than enough for me. So uh, again, the sweet peas are doing really well. Plenty of seed on there I need to pull off. Um, I've brought the incinerator up that I made um, earlier in the week on Monday, so that's ready to go. Um, so I'll be uh, Starting to put some rubbish in there when I clean the the, uh, the um, strawberries out. I'm trying to get my back to the wind so it doesn't affect the microphone too much. Uh, the potatoes, um, again, um, I've dug up a few more and uh, they've been quite nice. Um, parsnips growing merrily. I've not watered them. The uh, beetroot, I'm going to start pulling that soon. Um, even though the germination wasn't too well, as soon as I got them germinated, um, they've grown quite well. That that far end there hasn't done as much um, or as, as as well as this end here, uh, which is down to the I think the ground quality. The ground over there, um, where the corn is, is possibly the worst bit. So what I'm going to do next year is um, I've had the idea of digging all that out, putting a load of putting a load of muck in, and I'm going to put the beans in like a, a square there next year because the beans always seem to do well there, but nothing else does. So. I'm going to use that as my bean square, and rather than having them in a row like I've got this year, I'm going to uh, put them in like a square um, so I can get to both sides of the, the beans here. Because what I've found this year is the um, a lot of the beans are actually between the two rows of canes, so I have to keep sticking my head in the middle to find the beans. If I've only got one row of canes, and I can get in the middle of them if you like, um, so I, if, if I make like three sides of a square, um, I'll be able to get at the beans a lot easier. Um, the Swedes are doing okay, they've not started to fatten up yet, um, they have started slightly but um, they're not as advanced as they are normally. Um, the, uh, the rhubarb um, is doing alright, I've not had any of this second lot yet, but I've got these little brown bits on the leaves, not, not had that before, I'm not quite sure what it is, it possibly could be blight, because obviously it's been on the potatoes, but uh, I've not known rhubarb be affected by blight before. Uh, beans have done really well. I made a video earlier in the week, which I'll um, I'll show you now. So I'll just show you the beans. Um, it's been raining a bit today, so I'm not been able to do much. But I just wanted to show you this whilst I was here. If you see a bean like that, you can see if you look at it sideways. Um, to pick it, go about half an inch below the top and just push your thumb through it. If it breaks off cleanly like that. Um, it's okay to eat. Now if you look at that one's probably okay. That one's a bit borderline. But um, I've found some a bit further up. Now if you see if you look at that one, because I've not picked them for a few days because of the weather, um, you see how this has gone bulbous here. This is where the beans are forming on the inside. Now what I'm going to do now is leave these on the plant. Um, there's still going to be plenty more beans. You see all these flowers at the top? They're going to form into more beans, but um, I'm going to leave these on the plant to um, to take the seed. So basically, all I'm going to do is leave them on now till the end of the season, and probably September time these will start to dry out in about a month's time, and then I'll be able to take the seeds from here for next year. Um, likewise, here these ones have gone a little bit too far, so um, I've left them there. And it's seemingly it doesn't matter how many times you go up the beans, you always miss some. So you will find. Um, that you'll get some like this. Um, I have been pulling them off up until now because I wanted the, the sort of the goodness to go into the ones I was eating. But now we've got to um, August, 
Um, and in fact, there's quite a few, quite a few under here that um, if I can find them again. Uh, where are they? Oh, here. I don't know if I can get the camera in, but there's. If you look here, there's some here that have gone far too far. I don't know if you can see that. There, uh, look. So I'll leave them on. Um, so what you should end up with is you should be leaving like a part of the bean on the plant. The reason I do that is you have to top and tail them anyway. I've perhaps broken up a bit too much there, but uh, um, I don't want to damage this this part because obviously there are other beans that are still growing. So you can see here where I've pulled the beans off, uh, but these ones are still forming and these ones are still forming. So I've basically um, just broken it off about half an inch above so um, so you don't damage the stem and damage the rest. And today alone I've picked um, two, two and a half buckets of beans. Um, so there's probably something like nine, eight or nine kilos of beans there as soon as they're all chopped up and everything. Um, as I say, it doesn't matter how many times you look. Um, a, a good way to tell, if you press the bean there and it breaks off cleanly, then the bean's okay. If um, it breaks off, uh, see if I can see one that's, uh, there's one up here somewhere that's going a little bit too far. So here I've got one at the top, and as you can see, uh, you can tell by the size of it that it's, uh, it's gone too far. But if I put my finger through the top, can you see, I don't know if you saw that then, but there's like a stringy bit that come from here. Um, if it's like that, it's uh, it's gone too far. So, if you see any like that, just uh, discard them. So, on the other side of the beans, we've got the kohlrabi. Um, this one here has gone a bit funky. I don't know what's going on with that, but uh, they're starting into fat now. now. Um, kohlrabi is the. Uh, it's actually uh, very popular in Germany, and uh, they make um, the. Uh, um, what's it called now? I can't remember. The um, it'll come back to me. I'll I'll put it up on the screen now as a as a message. But anyway, that's what the Germans use rather than cabbage, um, like we typically use. They um, sauerkraut. They um, they use this, and uh, so it's 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 a, quite a strong taste, but um, it's quite nice, and it's very expensive to buy in the shop, and we tend to. Um, we tend to roast it, it's quite nice roasted, but you only want one or two because they are quite strong. Leeks doing really well, they're starting to fatten up now. Um, they get better as you go up there actually, funny enough, it's the opposite way around to the, uh, the other plants. Um, the uh, calendula's um, starting to sort of flop over a bit now because of the, the weight of the tops of them, but uh, they put on a fantastic show this year. Um, I need to start pulling off some of the dead heads, as you can see there's loads of them. But um, let's try to get around to it. Now I might lose you now with the wind, but um, that's the other side of the beans. I'm just trying to cover the mic so you don't get the wind blowing in there. But um, this is the corn. It's doing reasonably well. Um, they haven't really start, started to fatten up yet. But um, I'm going to try and uh, see if any of the corns are ready. This end here, obviously, as I explained, the ground's not particularly good. But um, there is a couple on there, so... Um, there might be something to have there, um, and the squash. That's the uh, the night. Um, what's it called? Hang on. Sorry, Winterfest, and um, the uh, butternut squash. Um, I have actually got a couple of gourds coming on there, so uh, they're doing all right. Um, I'll just quickly come up here because I think the wind's going to be affecting the sound. Um, there's some flowers here have probably grown about two foot this week, so uh, they've done really well. Um, little heads forming there, in there. So uh, uh, this is the other side of the um, the onions. Now it's cleared. I've pulled all the weeds out that are likely to seed, and so what I'll do is um, over the next week or so I'll give this a good dig over. Now this bit of ground here and where this tunnel is. I'll be planting the potatoes next year, so I'm going to be making sure there's plenty of muck on there. And we're back to the beginning. So uh, that was a really quick whistle top tour of the uh, of the um, allotment. But um, because I'd got the other two bits of video to put in, I didn't want to take too long talking to you. So 
So, last year's um, comedy vegetable was the uh, comedy carrot, which I'll show you a picture of right now. And after much deliberation, I've decided to give this year's um, award to the comedy tomato. Um, I have had tomatoes like this in the past, but uh, um, for some reason it's grown itself a little hat and um, a bit on the side, so I'm not quite sure why, but uh, anyway, this year's award goes to the comedy tomato. So, I hope you've enjoyed this um, episode of Jim's Allotment Garden. I'm not going to finish like I normally do. Um, unfortunately, I had a bit of sad news this morning. Uh, my my allotment pal, Casper Cat, unfortunately, um, had to be put to sleep this morning. Um, he's been battling with um, ill health for um, a month or so now, and uh, unfortunately the vets couldn't do anything more for him. So, uh, I just wanted to end with a video of me and him that was taken a few weeks ago and a few photographs. So thank you for watching Jim's Allotment Garden. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this episode um, and um, please let me know what you thought, please put some comments below and uh, if you've got any questions or anything uh, please subscribe and um, um, I'll see you next time on Jim's Allotment Garden. So from me and Casper Cat, bye bye. <laughs>